Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today, I'll show you how to create a Cuban chain in 3ds Max. To get started, press T on the keyboard to switch to the top view, then create a circle from the spline tab. Change its radius to 20.25. Press Z on the keyboard to focus on the circle, and then move it to the origin position. Then in its properties, check Enable in Rendering, and Enable in Viewport. Also change its other properties like thickness and sides. I find these values to work best for me. You can copy them or you can experiment with your own. Now apply an edit spline modifier to the circle. Choose vertex selection type and turn on wireframe mode. You will notice these four points in the circle. Grab the select and rotate tool and also turn on the angle snap toggle. Select the rightmost point and rotate it to a negative 60 degrees along the X axis. Then select the vertex opposite to it and rotate it to 60 degrees along the X axis. Select the bottom vertex and rotate it to negative 60 degrees along the Y axis. Finally, select the top vertex and rotate it to positive 60 degrees along the Y axis. You should end up with a shape like this. If done correctly, it should look like the symbol of infinity from the front. Now from the modifiers list, add an edit poly modifier. Choose the edge selection type. Now select the slice plane tool. A yellow plane will appear indicating where the mesh would be sliced. Move this plane upwards, although there is no specific value by which the plane should be moved upwards. But as a reference, make sure it is just above this line of outer edges. And just below this line of inner edges. Click on Slice. Now add a negative sign in front of the Z value of the slice plane, and then click on Slice again. Now that our mesh is sliced from the top and bottom, choose the polygon selection type and remove the polygons above and below the newly created edges like this. Now that we have a basic shape, it is time to close these massive gaps. We have to make sure that we do this cleanly, so that our final mesh doesn't look rough. So pay attention to these next steps. If you look at the inner side, there are these three vertices very close to each other. We can join them together using the weld and target weld tools. Repeat the same on the opposite side. You can also notice how these edges doesn't look very clean as they are cut off abruptly. To fix this, we will simply create a new line of edges using the connect tool and join them with this line by using the target weld tool again. Press and hold shift and delete key to delete these pointless edges. You can now see that the edges flow nicely. There is nothing much you can do on this side, except there are some vertices that are very close to one another. So we can just weld them together. All the other vertices should be checked as well to see if we can weld them together or not. When all of this is done, we will simply close the gaps by connecting the edges using the bridge tool. Repeat the same process for the rest of these gaps. With all the gaps closed, use the Polygon Selection tool to select the newly created polygons. With the polygon selected, use the inset tool and set the amount at 0, 0.0. Then with the scale tool, scale the polygons down a little. This will give a nice round corner when the turbo smooth modifier will be applied. But before that, we need to weld a few more vertices that are now on top of each other after using the inset tool. Once all is set, apply the turbo smooth modifier. Set the iteration to 3 and you should end up with a nice looking shape. After applying Turbo Smooth, you will clearly see if you have forgot to weld any of the vertices like I did here. If that is the case, 
you can simply go back to the Edit Poly modifier and fix them. Now temporarily remove the Turbo Smooth modifier. And then by holding down the Shift key, move the shape along the X axis to create copies. Set the number of copies to something like 75. Now you will have a long chain. Using the Attach option, attach all of the objects into one single mesh. Now I'm just going to quickly show you how you can make this Cuban chain follow a shape. Create any shape using the splines. Then with the chain selected, apply Path to Form modifier. Pick the shape as Path. Select X as Path to Form axis and click on Move to Path button. Now reapply the Turbo Smooth modifier and you will end up with a very good looking 3D Cuban chain that you can use in your projects. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. I upload straightforward tutorials on a number of subjects so please subscribe to learn something new regularly. Thank you for watching.